Hello, my name is Chris Washington, Sir Chris the Artist. I'm an artist from Birmingham, Alabama. I was born here and raised in Alabama. Uh, my medium is whatever I get my hands on. I'm just a natural born artist. I only been doing this for like five years. In 2016, on my birthday, God told me to pick up the brush. And when he told me to pick up the brush, I pick up the brush and I've been picking it up ever since. My medium is acrylics, uh, oil paintings, charcoals, you name it. That's why I say whatever I put my hands on, that's what I use. I'm more of an inspirational artist. I like to speak with my hands. And right now I chose to speak with my brush. I'm kind of an activist because I let my brush speak for those that can't speak for themselves. So I use my brush as a voice. The pieces that I'm exhibiting for this show is, I call them troubled. And the reason I have a lot of colors in them is because when you begin to mix a lot of colors together, it kind of seemed like chaos, but if you focus in on what's really going on, it'll, it'll remind you of a struggle. So that's why um, I presented these pieces, and they're actually like a part of a comic book. That's what I'm doing, mine's in a comic book forum. Like one piece is Brittany Taylor, that piece is called, actually I wrote a poem with that, Here I Lay you know, with that piece. And those pieces are the pieces of a comic book that I'm doing, that I'm putting together, you know. So it'll be your first time seeing a live comic book. And I think it'll extend maybe like six feet high or something like that when I bring the pieces together. My first experience with the civil rights movement was pretty much as a child growing up in the South. Um, actually living it, you know, seeing some things happen. I know I might not look like it, but I'm old school. I, I'm from the 60s, so I'm one of the 60s, baby, 60s and 70s. And not just, ex not just seeing it, but living it you know, to be able to experience some of the things that we paint about, some of the things that you see, some of the things that's in the history books, uh, and some of the things that are still going on to this very day. Being a black artist in the South, the way it affects, I think it affects others more so than myself, and I'll explain that. To me, I'm an artist. I don't see myself, you know, pretty much as a black artist, even though I know I'm black. But with others, they know where well, he can relate because this stuff that's happening is happening to people of his same gender, his same color, his same, same ethnic, you know what I'm saying? But I really don't, I really try not to like associate myself with just being a black artist. To me, that's pretty much for everybody else, you know. The reason I feel like it's important for my work to, to comment on the issues, and especially the social issues, art is a universal language. So what better way to address a universal problem than using a universal tool. So I feel like I was gifted to use whatever I have, to use the art to be able to reach people that I couldn't normally reach just with my normal voice. As I grew older, even in school, I had such a great passion for art. I used to draw cartoons, which I actually used those cartoons because I do animation also. So I use those cartoons in my animation. Some of the characters that I did when I was younger 
you know, uh, especially from the eighth and the ninth grade, got me into some trouble because when I was supposed to be doing my lesson and my work, most of the time I'm sitting there, I'm drawing, you know, and just having fun. And in high school, I began to enter into some art shows because I never really thought I was good enough to be like everybody else. I'm always looking at everybody else like, wow, you know, these people are awesome, but I never look at myself like that. So I entered into a contest, a drawing contest, and I came in second place all over, you know, uh, Alabama. And that really inspired me. So from that point, I would always, you know, would draw, do little charcoals here and there, but I never paint. 2016, God told me to pick up the brush because I also collect artwork and I would take them to the Little House Gallery so they could appraise it for me. You know, they used to always make jokes like, no, that's not your retirement or whatever. And so I, I was doodling on my phone. And when I showed him some, some of those work, you know, he was like, hey, these are pretty good. He said, who work is this? I said, oh, that's mine. He said, I know, but who did it? I said, I did. He said, let me see some more. So he began to look at some more and he was like, I like these. He said, you probably ought to pick up the brush. So I looked up, I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna pick up the brush. Didn't even know how to hold a palette knife or anything, but I just tried it, you know? And my first picture turned out pretty good and it was enough to encourage me, you know? And, and I thought that was pretty awesome. And when he looked at my work, I was trying to mimic uh, Henry Mortiz. And he was like, uh, hey man, these look good for Henry Mortiz. He said, I want to see more of your originality, you know, your original stuff. So as I began to do what came from the inside, he he, teased, he said, your work put me in the mind of Picasso. So that's how I got my second nickname, uh, Brocasso. Yeah, that's what they call me, Brocasso. Sir Chris the Artist, AKA Brocasso. And I love it. So that's how that, you know, got started. And then I went from, in 2018, um, I did Art Basel Miami, and that was a huge success. And then 2019, I did Art Basel Miami, and that was even a greater success. So, but I'm still learning. And I just want to pitch this out there. See, art is not what I do. Art is who I am. So whatever come up, comes out.